You're listening to Inspire Change, a broadcast that strives to educate, motivate, and empower men to challenge traditions of masculinity. To guide us through the intricacies and intersections of emotions, relationships, and male identity is renowned psychologist, author, and speaker, Gunter Swoboda. This is Inspire Change. Before I begin the actual podcast, I would like to respectfully acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which I work. I would also like to pay my respects to their elders past and present. Welcome everybody to another episode of Inspire Change with Gunter. I'm your host and for all of those who have subscribed and have been tuning in to me, a very, very warm welcome. And for those of you who are new, I hope this episode is the beginning of a wonderful relationship with what we're talking about in the world of psychology and human behaviour, human functioning, uh, from the neurosciences to sociology, anthropology, and so on. It's uh, The social sciences are a vast treasure of exploration but you've also got to know what you're looking for and how to discriminate uh, the good material from the not so good material and even the really bad material so as those of you who've been listening uh, are aware I've been doing a run on uh, a very extensive topic called ADD ADHD because one of the reasons for that is that I've got some concerns about how we're managing this thing. And so I want people to think of themselves as fundamentally consumers of the health system. Now, this is not something that I would normally advocate, basically, because I think in health, we're more than simply a consumer. We're actually patient, client, um, someone with lived experience and so on. So it's it's a much more complicated thing. But, you know, at the same time, I want to stress the fundamental need to come at this with an inquisitive, curious mind, okay? Uh, at some point in the future, I am going to do a, a podcast, just as a little teaser, on the fact that doubt is more important than the truth, and I'm going to base that on some work by a quantum physicist. Um, and I'm going to leave that for the time being. Hopefully it whets your appetite to tune in some more because I think these days we need to be particularly cognizant and critical and sceptical and doubtful about the material that we're consuming, both in the media but also elsewhere. All right. So... As I said, I was going to contrast uh, the medical model around ADD and the conventional uh, psychological model about ADD, ADHD with uh, some other work. And to be honest, I've decided that I'm going to take Dr. Gabor Maté and give you a really good insight and overview of his work in this particular field. Now, many of you will be familiar with him, but for those, let me give you a bit of a bio. So, Dr. Gabo Maté is a Canadian physician and author known basically for his work on addiction, trauma, stress, and the mind-body connection, okay? While his primary focus is on addiction and mental health, his framework can offer just an absolute spectrum of unique insights especially when applied to attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. Um, so, so I want to provide you with an overview and critique of looking at ADHD through his lens. But before I do that, I, I want to give his book, Scattered Minds, a big plug because Fundamentally, I think it's probably the best book that's currently on the market about ADD, ADHD. So let me give you a brief. So this Scattered Minds is probably Dr. Gabo Mate's most significant work, and it delves into the complex world of attention deficit disorder. Um, 
Dr. Mate, who himself was diagnosed with ADD, combines his personal experiences with his professional knowledge as a physician to offer a comprehensive understanding of the disorder. Now, one of the things that I like is that here we have a physician who's gone away from inherently the medical model and has expanded his view of human beings and the various levels of distress and disorders that we experience. Now, the book, as I said, challenges traditional views of ADD, which I like, arguing that it is not just a genetic or biologically based condition, but also that it's significantly influenced by environmental factors, particularly in early childhood. The core argument of the book revolves around the impact of a child's early environment on the development of ADD. Dr. Mate suggests that attachment issues and stresses in the early years, that they can contribute to the development of ADD. And I completely concur with that assessment. He emphasises that the role of nurturing and the need for a supportive environment to mitigate the disorder's effects is essential. So by doing so, the book shifts the focus from solely medication-based treatment to a more holistic approach that includes addressing the emotional and psychological needs of an individual with ADD. Now, for those of you who have been listening to my podcast, and especially the series on ADD, ADHD, you will have heard me hint at this, okay? Now, when I was training in addictions, the thing that we talked about fundamentally was the biopsychosocial model. And it's still a model that I think is very relevant. And Dr. Mate uh, is instrumental in bringing this to the world in a new iteration, in my view. So, you know, we've got to we've got to really pay attention to people who are outside of the traditional field in this context. Um, so his work too is fundamentally important in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy, especially in the context of masculinity studies, as he offers insights into how societal and familial expectations can shape the experiences of individuals, especially males, with ADD. The book encourages a deeper, deeper understanding and a more compassionate approach towards those living with attention deficit. It, it, it advocates for societal and familial support systems that can foster healthier mental and emotional development. Now, at a time where mental health issues are fundamentally exploding at our, out of our wazoo with the uh, accompanying costs that we incur both as a society but also from a political economic basis, this is massive. And I, and I think if we don't listen to someone especially like Gabo Mate and many other people who are in the same, you know, uh, looking at the problem from the same framework, there's something wrong with us. We've got to pay attention. You know, I'm a firm believer is that, you know, it's possible that our reliance on psychotropic medications is, is way out of, out, of, out of context. It's just we're overdoing it. As I said before, at a time when we got more of these drugs available, our mental health statistics are actually getting worse, but so are our physical uh, lifestyle issues. I've got a special announcement about how you can work with me. Since starting this podcast, I've had a lot of inquiries from listeners asking how they can work with me on a one-to-one basis. Now, I finally managed to free up some time to work with about five clients privately. Typically, we'll work together for six months, applying the ideas I discuss here to help you lead a fulfilled, meaningful and happy life and a well-rounded life. If that's something you'd be interested in, drop me an email at gunter at goodmengreat.com and we'll be in touch. 
Okay, so let's take a bit of a closer look at the theoretical framework. So Dr. Matte's theoretical framework emphasises that there's an interplay between early life experiences, trauma and coping mechanisms. And these key elements include Early life experiences. He underscores the profound impact of early life experiences, especially adverse childhood experiences, and how that impacts on an individual's emotional and psychological well-being. Trauma, neglect, or dysfunctional family dynamics during childhood can contribute to various mental health challenges later in life. But now here's a point that I want to make. In many instances, it doesn't require the magnitude of those types of issues. For example, one of the things that is particularly evident in the people that I work with, the boys and men that I work with, one of the key factors is the attachment disturbance that can go on when a child's been separated from maternal and parental or paternal caregiving. And, and that, that is just something that we just constantly seem to ignore in our culture. The other issue that comes up in, as part of the framework is the notion of coping mechanisms. A central theme in Matteo's work is that individuals often develop coping mechanisms, including addictive behaviours, to numb emotional pain or fill an emotional void or voids. These coping mechanisms then serve as survival strategies in response to adverse life events. Mind-body connection is another issue. Mate emphasises the intimate connection between emotional, psychological stress and physical health. He argues that unresolved emotional issues can manifest as physical symptoms and can contribute to chronic health conditions. Now, I've had many discussions with various people, various professionals from all sorts of different walks of life, and that position is still under, you know, sort of scrutiny, and a lot of people don't accept that. My experience is that that whole mind-body connection is absolutely spot on. So another factor in the framework is the notion of compassion and healing. Dr. Matei highlights the importance of compassion, empathy, holistic healing in addressing addiction and mental health issues. He believes that understanding and addressing these underlying emotional pains and trauma are essential for a proper recovery. Okay. So what does this mean in the framework of ADHD? So... Firstly, Mate would want to explore how early life experiences could contribute to the ADHD symptoms. For instance, children exposed to trauma of family dysfunction might develop attention and impulse control difficulties as a, man- as a coping mechanism. You know, sometimes when parents are fighting, a child will start screaming or, you know, acting out, right? So that's a beginning process. The coping mechanisms, you know, often about shutting down the external and internal noise. The only problem is in ADD, ADHD, the internal noise doesn't shut up. It's just ongoing. You know, people constantly tell me about how their mind is so busy, constantly uh, racing. So the use of Substances, alcohol, drugs, and so on, becomes enticing because it sedates some of this. Um, so, you know, in trauma work, we often talk, and this is coming back to the mind body connection how the body keeps the score. Bessel von der Kolk, uh, an expert in the field of post traumatic stress and trauma, talks a lot about this, and you know. One of the things that I know from personal experience, and I haven't been traumatised. I mean, I've never fallen off a cliff, but I have an intense fear of heights. And I can tell you that where I register that is in my body, and especially in my guts, it seems to tense up. And so I become extremely physically uncomfortable, let alone mentally uncomfortable. 
So what does that all mean ultimately when we're talking then about treatment? Well, treatment can't simply rely on medication. We need to take a holistic approach to this. We need to basically do comprehensive assessment and treatments uh, and consider treatment approaches that fit in with that comprehensive assessment. And it's not only to address the symptoms, but also to consider the broader emotional and psychological aspects that the person is experiencing. You know, we become a little bit myopic. Now, when I look at the DSM, you know, 5, and I look at a lot of the sort of symptomology for ADD, ADHD, a lot of it is fundamentally someone else's subjective appraisal of what's happening for you. And I think that a lot of times we're not listening to the person experiencing it themselves. Uh, The challenge we got these days is that a lot of times people present to me and they've already spent hours trawling through Dr. Google and so on. So their experience in some respects has been contaminated by what they read, what they watch. All right? So it's hard to actually you know, get a clean look at what their true experience, their authentic experience is about without those cognitive overlays. Now, the way to explain that is it's a bit, uh, it's a little bit, you know, from the school of, um, uh, you know, animal behaviorists who watch animals and record what they're doing. Now, the problem with that is that we often come at it from a perspective of a human being, not necessarily the animal. So we make and can jump to conclusions that actually don't fit the experience of the animal. Um, so, for example, you know, the whole thing about the alpha male amongst wolves, and then we extrapolate that to how that fits to human beings, especially males, male human beings. And, you know, there's nothing further from the truth than the alpha male syndrome, which is essentially someone who's fundamentally insecure and masks it with arrogance and narcissism as a defense mechanism for his inadequacies. So, yep, you know, we've got to be careful here. So, so, you know, not everyone is necessarily going to agree with me, and that's fine. You know, to me, what's important in science and in the practice of the social sciences, as well as in psychotherapy and so on, is that we have an open, expansive curiosity approach to understanding what is out there in the world and what's internally within our own world inside. Let's not jump to conclusions. You know, you know, if I was a quantum physicist, I'd have to admit that I know there, there is much, much more unknown than there is known in that field. And I apply that to psychology and psychotherapy as well. Each and every one of my clients teaches me something, but often I find myself giving them frameworks that they can relate to that help them explore their experience further to both understand the the functional aspects of their symptomology, but also understand how they've become dysfunctional. I mean, you know, there's a functional aspect to addiction. It sedates the pain that you're experiencing, but it only works in the short term because in the long term it fucks your life. So let's be cognizant of that, Okay. So I hope you're going to take something out of this. Please, by all means, if you are looking at educating yourself further with ADD, ADHD, reading Dr. Garbo Mate's book, Scattered Minds, is essentially a must. Okay, now just a quick plug. Uh, on um, this Friday, Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, I've been invited to participate in a webinar uh, called Violence Against Women is a Learned Behaviour. Yep, I know there's going to be some controversies around that, and so be it. Let's enter the fray willingly and openly and have respectful discussions on that. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing the evolution of our brains, embedded stereotypes, and how we can contribute to a culture of respect and belonging. So it's not just me, it's 
Dr. Mark Williams. You've heard him before on my podcast. He's a good friend and colleague and also an educator, um, Matt Smith, who is the founder, managing director, principal consultant for Summit Education. Um, so this is going to be a great chat, hopefully, you know, a bit fiery. It's always good to get into a few sort of controversial areas. I'm certainly too old to mince my words or be politically too correct. So please join us. Um, the invitation to join is on LinkedIn. Uh, Matthew Smith, if you look him up, uh, you will see um, the the information for the podcast or the webinar, I should say. And uh, or alternatively, if you go to my Facebook page or um, just dial it up, violence against women is a learnt behaviour. So Dr. Mark Williams, Matthew Smith and myself are going to be in discussion. I hope lots of people join in. Until next time, this is me signing off. And as always, I hope you have found that this podcast has inspired you to reflect and change and inspire others to do the same. Until next time, this is me signing off. Love to hear from you. And if you're interested, um, please check out my work on www.gontaswoboda.com or www.goodmengreat.com. Thank you for listening to Inspire Change, a broadcast that strives to educate, motivate, and empower men to challenge traditions of masculinity. For more information on the Making Good Men Great movement, or for individual or group coaching sessions with Gunter, visit goodmengreat.com. For inquiries regarding broadcast topics or appearing on the show, email miranda at noartainment.com. That's miranda at n-o-i-r-t-a-i-n-m-e-n-t.com.